Greetings and welcome back to the Amazon playthrough. I thought for Nightmare difficulty I would do a quick summary video since Nightmare mode is usually pretty smooth. Normal mode you have to deal with starting fresh, no gear, building up your skills. But Nightmare mode you can generally just keep doing what you're doing and make it to hell no problem and such was the case for my Amazon here. Coming into Nightmare at level 32 is a little low but I shouldn't be a problem since my resists were decent enough and my skills were definitely providing enough damage to clear things out relatively well. Once I made it to the Black Marsh, I decided to do some Countess runs in order to find runes to make an insight polearm for my mercenary and hopefully f find enough runes so that I could make a harmony for myself. And then I could have a decent weapon to try out a bow build, perhaps. But I mostly wanted it for that Viger Aura, which I thought would be pretty nice to have on a weapon switch, just for running around. I found that the Forgotten Tower is actually a pretty good place to get levels, since each floor of the tower is usually populated with an elite monster pack, sometimes more. By chance there were several shrines right outside the tower as well on my map, giving me an experienced shrine pretty often to make my leveling even faster. By level 43, I had maxed out Charge's Strike and Plague Javelin, and also got appointed to Critical Strike, Penetrate, and Pierce. At that point, I decided to start working on Lightning Fury instead of going for Valkyrie, and it may have turned out for the better since those passive dodging skills can interrupt my attacks when they go off. I killed Andariel without much of an issue, using pretty much the same poison and kite tactics as in normal mode while also running in for a few charge strikes before retreating to a safe distance to heal and apply more poison. With her dead, I grabbed an Act 2 Might Mercenary. Sorry Durga, but my heart belongs to Emilio. And then I continued to farm the Countess a bit more, getting to level 47, acquiring some soul runes, finding a pretty ball and rare circlet with plus one to Amazon skills, some attack rating, damage reduction, chance to cast Nova, which is actually pretty nice to have, and a whopping 40% cold resistance. And I was also able to bust a rhyme and a small shield for extra resists in that fantastic cannot be frozen modifier, which is really something I should have done earlier. Uh, it's too bad that through all of this I didn't find a co rune for my harmony. The highest I got was an IO. Moving on to Act 2, everything was pretty cut and dried. There's not much here to note. I did encounter a strange occurrence with Radiment where he apparently didn't spawn. A bug, possibly? I tried twice and he was a no-show, so I had to reset the map to finish the quest. But other than that, the rest of Act 2 was quite breezy with no problems. Even Duriel didn't pose much of a threat, and I was able to take him down without much difficulty. Act 3 was very much the same, though the Gloams in the Great Marsh were quite resistant to my lightning damage, and the Horror Skeletons in the Kurast Sewers were resistant to both my lightning and poison damage, which was a minor annoyance, but something to note. At this point, I'm about level 52, and the most notable event occurred in the ruined temple of the Kurast Bazaar. War Traveler Battle Boots dropped from one of Serena's minions. They rolled a 35 MF, which is really low, but they're War Travs, and I'm always happy to have some War Travs. Though I didn't use them at all, favoring my 20 Lightning Res Boots for more survivability for now. I also found a rare Maiden Javelin with replenished quantity on it, and while the pure damage on it was a tad lower, the base weapon speed was faster, it had a larger stack size, and it had plus one javelin skill, so I opted to use this for the rest of Nightmare. 
And at this point, my resistances are all about 50 to 65, which is much better than usual for me. The council members didn't pose much of a problem. One of them dropped a shimmering large charm with seven all resistance, and I found another one immediately after that in the Durance of Hate, nearly maxing out my resistances at this point. With all of that, Mephisto went down pretty easily, and Emilio even survived the whole ordeal. Act 4 was also surprisingly easy. Izual has lots of hit points, and I thought I would try using Jab with the crushing blow from the Goblin Toe Boots that I found in Act 1. It seemed to work somewhat okay, though my attack rating on Jab was simply too low for it to be truly effective. I think if I invest more points into Jab and or get my hands on the Angelic Ring and Amulet combination for the attack rating boost, Crushing blow jab strats would be more effective on high HP targets. Uh, Hephaesto the armor was no problem, and I got a fall rune from the forge, which is currently my highest rune. And through the river of flame, I found lightning fury, which is approaching a decent level now, to start becoming rather useful for clearing dense crowds, though it is very mana hungry and I still haven't gotten a four socket polearm for insight. Though I did find a grand charm with plus 52 mana on it upon entering the chaos sanctuary, which is about a 50% increase for me and it's been a huge help in cutting my potion usage and sustaining my offensive skills. As for the Diablo fight, Emilio lasted about halfway through Rip Emilio, and while the open wounds proc from his Blood Thief have been helpful thus far, especially on bosses, I was able to weather Diablo's attacks with my high resistances rather well, and the victory was predetermined by my efficacious preparations. Too bad on those drops, though. The last act, and it's really just a race to the top of Mount Ariat to fight Ancients and Bale, doing Shank and the Anya quest along the way, but I also like to clear the rest of the quests as well. The only minor hiccup here was running into Gloams and the Frozen River, which are actually lightning immune here in Act 5. I was able to take them out with a Plague Javelin, but it was rather slow and I decided to just save myself the trouble and re-roll the map for some easier monsters. Nilithak was a pain, if only because he spawned with Tomb Vipers, whose poison attacks are bugged to do insane damage even in Nightmare. You tried, Emilio. You tried. The man himself was far more frail than his serpentine servants. On the way to Ancients, I found an Ethereal Pole Axe and decided to use the cube recipe to add sockets to it. It rolled with 4, so I finally crafted my Insight, which sadly only got a level 13 Meditation Aura. Regardless, it'll certainly be useful in helping my mana woes. The Ancients were a bit troublesome, and I did have to reset them a few times until I got modifiers that made the fight more favorable for me. Good work, Emilio. And as for Bale and his minions, well, I'll just let you see the outcome of that, and then I'll go over all of my stats, gear, and skills going into hell.
salutations. show off my gear, my stats, my second page of stats, and there we go, my weapon, still wearing stealth hard leather, <laughs> got a rhyme small shield, found this awesome circlet, Fire resist here. Found these awesome gauntlets for resistance. Ditto for the boots. More resistance. Just an MF ring. Another MF ring with a little bit of resist on it. Some attack rating. MDR. Belt of stability. And as for charms, got a 5 FRW. 5 light res. I don't know if I really want that one, but that's there. We got another one. Got a 21 fire res to make up for the loss. 15 life or small. 2 all resistance, 7 large charms. 52 mana. Which is like 50% boost, which is hugely helpful. 5 MF. And a 10 max damage, 50 poison damage, which just seemed pretty good. <laughs> so yeah. And my skills. I just have one in these three. Maxed out charged and plague. And a maxed out lightning fury after that. 